Well, NASA and Roscosmos can finally breathe a sigh of relief after the accidents was so used leaving two cosmonauts and one NASA astronaut without a ride home. Last week, Russia launched an uncrewed Soyuz spacecraft on a rescue mission to help in the return of the crew. However, surely no one wants to go through those dangerous accidents again, so the Russian government is working with NASA to update an agreement to allow Russian cosmonauts to fly on the next two SpaceX crew rotation missions to the ISS. So is this safe for the American astronauts to be swapped out? Soyuz and Russia's space program are just too terrible. Let's find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In comments at a March 2nd briefing after the launch of the Crew-6 briefing, Kathy Luters, the NASA Associate Administrator for Space Operations, said negotiations were in progress to update an existing agreement with Roscosmos to add the Crew-7 mission to the station scheduled to launch in the fall. The original seat barter agreement between the agencies finalized in July of 2022 exchanged one Soyuz seat per year for one Crew Dragon seat. When the agreement was announced, NASA said cosmonauts Anna Kakina and Andrei Fedyev would fly on Crew-5 and Crew-6 respectively, but did not name assignments for later missions. At a briefing on January 25th, Joel Montalbano, NASA ISS program manager, said discussions about Crew-7 in the fall were in progress. Quote, we're not finalized yet on the fall, but we're continuing to work in that direction, he said. Luter said after the launch of Crew-6 that an update to that agreement to include Crew-7 was in progress. Quote, we're working that through the Russian government and then back through, obviously, our side to get final agreement, she said. That's our goal, to get this to be able to support integrated crews. Such integrated crews, where there's one American astronaut on each Soyuz launch and one Russian cosmonaut on each commercial crew launch, is intended to ensure operation of the station should either Soyuz or commercial crew vehicles be unavailable for an extended period. With the addition of Crew-7 agreement, we would have coverage for Crew-7 and Crew-8, the following Crew Dragon rotation mission planned for 2024, Looters said. The agreement does not cover flights by Boeing CST-100 Starliner vehicle, which has not yet flown astronauts. That vehicle's crew flight test, which will carry two astronauts to the station, is scheduled for the latter half of April, NASA and Boeing officials said in February. That would allow crew rotation missions, also called post-certification missions or PCMs, to begin in 2024. At some point, when we've gone through our crew flight test with Boeing and an initial PCM-1 mission, we would be looking at also adding Boeing to an integrated crew agreement, Luter said. We'd like to continue that. Every single crew rotation mission has integrated crew on it. While the negotiations for adding Crew-7 to the seat barter agreement continue, Roscosmos is preparing for it to be approved. In a March 1st post on its Telegram social media account, it announced that Konstantin Borisov would be part of the Crew-7 mission and Alexander Grabenkin would fly on Crew-8. The post added that Crew-8 would launch in the first half of 2024, suggesting Roscosmos expects it to take place before the first Starliner crew rotation mission. After all, the astronauts have overcome life and death difficulty during the past few months, and now's the time to look back at Russia's Soyuz program. Many accidents happen that have shattered public confidence in the aging Russian technology, which is crucial to the future of manned spaceflight. The mishap could hardly have happened at a worse time. Clearly, the problems with the almost 50-year-old Soyuz rocket are casting a shadow over Russia's ambitious space plans. The Kremlin has dreamed for years of carrying out a manned mission to Mars. Russian scientists are working on developing a new type of nuclear propulsion to that end. Russian experts want to start constructing a permanent base on the moon in 2035 with the eventual aim of extracting natural resources from the Earth's satellite. But a series of mishaps over the past few months have shaken the self-confidence of the spacefaring nation. Roscosmos has problems with quality management and with quality control of components. Russia's space industry is now paying the price for failed reforms carried out in the 1990s. At the time, a whole generation of young experts either went to work abroad or switched to other professions. Had they stayed, they would now be at the peak of their careers. 
On top of that, the equipment at the plants that manufacture the rockets is hopelessly outdated. Also, the aging workforce at the Energomash factory on the outskirts of Moscow, signs of progress and decline are close together. The FSB, that's Russia's domestic intelligence agency, intensively screens the company's foreign guests before a visit, a process that usually takes several months. More than 5,000 employees work here building the RD-180 rocket engine, a Russian export success in the space industry. The engine, which is three and a half meters or 11 and a half feet high and weighs over five tons, is a modernized version of the rocket engine from the 70s. It's considered so reliable that Americans even buy it to use with their Atlas rockets. Since 2001, Energomash has increased the price of the engine from $4 million to $12 million. Energomash is an important company for Russia, which wants to diversify exports to include more than just oil and gas. Inside the factory building, heroes of the socialist past are depicted in colorful murals on the walls, including the image of a young Yuri Gagarin, a pioneering Soviet cosmonaut. But the present looks less promising. The average age of the blue coverall-wearing men and women who assemble the engines is over 50 years old. An Energomash engineer earns the equivalent of 1,000 euros per month. In the cosmopolitan city of Moscow, only pensioners would work for such a pittance scoffs rocket expert Viktor Yasnikov. It's the same story across the country, with the average age of all industry managers being around half century. When it comes to scientific staff, the average age is an elderly 63. Not properly tested. Sloppy work is also a problem. Even when December 2011, the incorrectly fueled Proton M rocket crashed into the Pacific, sinking three navigation satellites, turned out that Roscosmos had not adequately insured the cargo, which was worth well over 50 million euros. An investigation revealed that the rocket's defective stage had not been properly tested. Russian President Dmitry Medvedev, who likes to praise Russia as the number one in terms of space launches, responded by making an example of two high-ranking individuals in the space industry. First, he dismissed the chief designer at the spacecraft manufacturer Energiaia. Then he also fired the head of Roscosmos. Not everyone is convinced by such moves, however. Saber rattling does not work, says Konstantin Kredinko of the specialist journal GLONASS Bulletin. If we fire our current rocket specialist, we won't find any new ones. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.